I tried drag for the first time. I performed, I did a little runway walk. It was crazy, it was fun, it was absolutely rewarding. I'm so grateful for the experience and I wanted to show y'all what it was about. And this whole process started literally last semester in around October when my friends Jaina and Ray pulled me into the drag cast at USC. They have been in the drag scene for a while, especially Ray performing at West Hollywood, gigs here and there. My friend Jaina, a huge, huge fan of Drag Race. And they're also art school students. That's how I met them at Roski. Shout out Roski. And when they asked me to audition for the drag cast, I was like, no, no. I can't do that. Like, I'm not fit for that. I cannot perform. I like to be in my little corner at school. I'm not that, like, extroverted and confident in myself. However, after some convincing, I decided that this is literally my last chance ever to probably do drag, and it'd be a great introduction into it because I would be surrounded by people I know, and all my friends would have supported me no matter what, even if I do flop. So I just decided, yeah. I'll try. I'll try, girl. And just a mini disclaimer here, I'm not actually trying to be like a drag queen queen. Like, it's not like me trying to actually be like on drag race or like a step towards that. Like, that's not my goal at all. It was just to step into a different persona. So when you are going to judge me and come for me in the comments about like, this is not drag, this is da 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 da. Um, I get it. But again, a first for everything. This is just a step towards opening up a new brand of creativity that I may pursue later on, may not. I ended up getting named by Jaina as Penelope Pen. Penelope Pen. And it's a plan words of me having an EpiPen because I am highly allergic to nuts and peanuts. Since October of last year, I've been kind of slowly but surely thinking about my drag persona, what it would be like, and what garment I would make for the runway because I was just doing runway. And I ended up settling on this oversized 10 foot long arm hanbok that was also a mix of a puffer jacket. Now I have made puffer jackets in the past. Y'all may have seen her before. And it was kind of nerve wracking. As I said, maybe the last vlog of trying to make a hanbok similar. The last one literally gave me like my entire like kind of art career thus far, not gonna lie. It was one of my first projects in art school, 105. It helped me grow on TikTok. Like it was one of my first viral series. It got almost too much attention. Um, ended up being on the cover of the LA Times, which just fell into my kind of life, like the opportunity. I don't know, it's very bizarre. And so ever since then, I've been trying to move past that and move forward because I'm trying to show people that I'm not like, a one trick pony, like babes I can paint. Allegedly, maybe possibly I can do photos, possibly allegedly again. So reverting back to that kind of symbol was stressful, but we did it, we did it. Two weeks ago, I started the process of creating this look. Okay, it was meticulous, tenuous, time intensive. Um, yeah. I ended up going to the fashion district to get a bunch of different fabrics, particularly this kind of like is it muslin? It's like a thin fabric that many people use as a template. And so I got like a huge ass roll of that because there would be long arms, there would be an oversized jacket. And I started cutting out those pieces, going through that whole entire process. I honestly was like being self-referential because I was looking back at my old process videos of how I created the cardboard puffer jacket. And so I literally just copied the same like kind of silhouettes that I used for that puffer jacket and used that on the muslin template fabrics. The only difficult part was actually understanding how to make um, sleeves. I was so confused on how sleeves work. How to sew the sleeve to the actual chest particles. Like, and so that one I did have to look up a YouTube video, which was very helpful. Yeah, yeah, that was helpful. That was what? That was fun. That was fresh. In the past, my colors have been very muted in my work. It's been a lot of blacks and whites, high contrast, very Baroque-ish, Renaissance-y possibly, because that was in the mindset of me just like learning art history, being, you know, as one does, obsessed with like the Western canon, the Western European canon, and just making art based off of that because that was just the curriculum I was shown. But as I started reading more texts, particularly about concepts around the fabulous from Madison Moore, who was a teacher at USC, but had since left, just showed me the importance of color and celebrating queerness or in between this. Really just drag, essentially, just celebrating the art form, celebrating my own identity or the lack thereof. Fabulousness really just breaks all those barriers down and just ends up maybe like somewhat punk countercultural, but at the heart, it's like just confidence and just using the materials that you have around you to be your most fabulous self, which doesn't sound like conceptual or sounds very simple, but in essence, it's very, very difficult to embrace fabulousness when you have all these societal expectations to conform 
whatever. And so I thought that being bright fucking pink would really help with that. So that's what I went for when I went to the fashion district with my friend. I just picked out a bunch of different fabrics and textures and patterns that really spoke to me. And I had my friend Trinice to actually help me pick out some of the fabrics because I wasn't really sure what would look good together because was it was supposed to be like a visual mishmash. Mishmash. Um, little Chex Mix of colors, flavors, but I wasn't sure if it would all work. But I think it worked out in the end. Y'all will find out. Y'all will see later. Part of being in the drag cast that was so empowering though was having this one like makeup session where everyone was just doing their makeup together and practicing it. It was my first time ever doing makeup and I needed a lot of help from my like castmates. I needed some lash glue, I borrowed a mirror from someone, I borrowed powder, I borrowed glue to glue down my eyebrows, concealer, like I pretty much had like almost nothing. Learning from zero and having everyone be so helpful and gracious enough to spend time away from their looks over to help me develop mine was so... It was a vibe. It was a vibration, babes. And I'm so, so thankful for that. And so that was just a really fun day because the next week we actually got to use those makeup looks that we developed and then have a little photo shoot to promote the drag show. And because I was Penelope Pen, babes, like, of course I had to show up in an EpiPen. Duh. Wait, what phone is this? It's a 13 Pro Max. Shit. What are you doing today, Trinice? I'm taking photos. Photos. Oh. <laughs> Wait, give it 360 of your hair. It's so good. Oh. <laughs> so I made a little EpiPen out of cardboard and paint, and it's supposed to be very like crafty, kind of a quirky little vibe. I was not trying to be the prettiest girl. I was not trying to be the loudest girl. I was just trying to be myself. This is what the photos look like. Shout out to Trinice for taking the photos. The makeup inspo was this sunburnt goggle look after like skiing, very Americana, Kim Kardashian, Nadia Lee Cohen type vibration. I don't think I executed it that well, but I tried. I tried my best. And then I just kept grinding on the look, sewing and sewing and sewing my little ass away to get this shit done. And it was coming down to the wire. I spent probably 50 hours making this look within the span of two weeks, which was absolutely nuts. Like in the first couple weeks of school too, like girl, I'm in syllabus week, but also making this drag look and like busting my ass for it. And I kept thinking to myself like, will this be worth it? Like, I'm not sure, but like, I just want to try something. Oh, I'm so over it. Okay, this is the moment of truth. I'm going to try part of it on. Whoa. Does it look like a thing? Is this crazy or what? I have no idea. What do we think? What do we think? I have literally no clue. Cannot tell you. What?
A couple days before the show on Sunday, I just started vlogging everything else. So I'm gonna put all those clips here now so you can see the entire chaos that ensued before the show. Hello everyone, welcome to the studio vlog. I've not had any time in the studio by myself. Isn't that crazy? Like people are just like working in the studio. I thought this was literally my own spot, but obviously not. That was a joke, clearly. Um, I'm sharing the space. I have like a very tiny like little corner not even corner anymore, just like a little spot um, that's extraordinarily messy because I've been putting this giant look together. But I have a little spot in the studio and so it is very rare that I do get alone time. And that's the only time I feel like comfortable. Is anyone here? Hello? That's the only time I ever feel comfortable like talking to myself because it's fucking embarrassing. Doing it in front of people. Yeah, what else? What else? Oh, I just did an interview for Joy Sauce, which is like a small online publication about like Asian Americans. And it was a really good conversation I had with this guy named Kelvin. He also is in LA, but we did our little interview on Zoom. Super sweet guy. And I was so, so like inarticulate. I was all over the place. I was rambling. I was yapping away but he said he got what he needed and so i'm grateful for that i just like had to go straight from class to my home to do the interview and at my home the wi-fi cut out spectrum get your stuff together um it should come out like in the next month what else babes i don't even know like i literally don't even know this is everything i've been painting recently she's kind of crazy i don't really know what i'm doing necessarily let me just very quickly explain each damn piece this is about toast, um, this is about sucking some fingers, this one is about dancing and having a psychological spread, and this is just something else. <laughs> I have zero clue what this vlog is gonna be, but babes, my bike tire literally popped while I was biking and uh, I need to go get a fix because girl, how am I gonna get to places if I don't have a damn motherfucking bike? So we're gonna fix it right now. I'm just walking like literally half a mile to, to fix her up, but we'll see. I'm so sorry for not talking that much in this vlog. Like, that's crazy. That's literally crazy. I just came back from my run. I just came back from my run. It was a solid run. I'm about 4.3 at a 6.08 pace, which is okay for me. At this weather, I should be running way faster, but 
whatever. I'm over it. I'm over it. As for my bike, the place I was going to originally literally was closed for some reason. So I had to walk a separate like 0.3 to a different bike shop. Luckily, there are like so many bike shops in my area. Got it fixed there, literally for $12, thank you. So that was a vibration, babes. I was listening to Me by Taylor Swift today and why is it such a good song? Like, I think we all collectively slept and made fun of it for her and Brendan Yuri just doing whatever they were doing in the music video. But if you really listen to it, like, oh my god, the lyrics are so good. There's also like an acoustic version on TikTok, girl singing it. It's so heartbreaking, I'm obsessed. Speaking of heartbreaking, I am a free man, finally. I deleted all my dating apps, like deleted, deleted. Profile, disappeared, gone, into the void, no longer existent. And I literally feel like I'm twitching. I feel like I'm literally having um, withdrawals, but that's okay because I know that in two weeks, my mind state will be literally like superior. I would have ascended, ascended. So I actually re-downloaded all those apps. Um, I'm mentally weak. What can I say? <laughs> what can I say? I think I told you all this before. There was a summer. <laughs> you know the movie 50 First Dates? Yeah, that was me, literally. Like, so many first dates, so many just stories, but also no stories at all. It was basically me just listening to them talk. I don't know why, but I kind of gave up like wanting to talk about myself at all. And so I would just ask them questions about their lives and it would get so deep for no reason. I, I don't even know. I just, nothing has ever felt right. And then I literally, thought I was asexual for like a, a hot sack. Everyone thinks I'm so crazy because like my art is so like quote unquote explicit, but babes, that's not my vibration. Um, that's it. <laughs> I don't know why I'm ranting. It's the weather. The we When it rains in LA, everyone just starts going nuts. And that's me right now. I hate running. I hate it. It's so awful. But that's the only thing that can sometimes possibly potentially maybe actually calm my mind. And so I need to do it. Also, I'm just forcing myself to do shit. Like, for what? Um, you probably can't even hear us being I'm saying too because it's so damn fucking windy. But it's a perfect weather to run. So I'm not going to run now. Yeah. It was literally hell. I'm in 4.3 at a 5.59 pace. But the thing was, I literally had like two and a half like lights to take like a 10 to 15 second break at, which obviously affected my times. I'm gonna take a shower now and then probably grab dinner with a friend and then maybe party a bit after. Uh, I serve like a good time once in a while, sure. I've created such a mess in this damn studio, y'all. Like, all the fabric is coming apart, but it's worth it because I got this damn hat. Let me put this shit on. Hold on. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. Korean as fuck, babe. Period. Uh, the flaps were not going to be this big. And they're supposed to be a bit more stable than this. But you know what? We're just gonna go with the flow. It's gonna be campy, extravagant, like fuck, babes. It's drag. It is drag. I'm gonna clean all this fabric up and then start on a painting. So I'm gonna take all of this stuff down, move it to this wall, and then put the canvas that I have here onto that wall. I have a painting due Monday. It's Saturday. And also I have an essay due, shit. I have an essay to do too. Ugh, I have an essay due Sunday night as well. So I probably have to submit it tonight because I'm trying to do Just Drag tomorrow. Um, and then I have a birthday party tonight to go to as well. Oh, so much, so much, but also it's fun. It's a lot of work, but I have to remind myself like, I'm just having a good time. Like y'all are trying to clock me and I'm stressed out. I'm stressed out and anxious, but babe, I'm stressed out and anxious because I'm trying to have so much fun. I'm trying to pack in my day with just action packed things. So of course I should be stressed, but also of course it's like, don't stress. So like, why am I even stressing if it's just gonna be fun? It's all gonna be fun. Except for this essay, that's not gonna be fun, but it will be fun. Cause I'm literally talking about like Asian bottoms. <laughs> I'm not even gonna explain. 
to y'all, actually. Actually, no, I will. I'm gonna do a video essay soon that's like 45 minutes long on all the research I've done on Asian masculinity and queer forms of inscrutability within Asian Americans. And it's gonna be me, like, basically paraphrasing a bunch of different texts I've read, but also contextualizing them and stringing them together. Um, so stay tuned. Wow, I literally look... I look... Oh my god. Oh, I kind of like that. Today is the day of the drag show and it's 9.40 right now. I'm walking to Ralph's in sandals. I know, babes, but I need my oat milk. I need my oat milk to make my matcha. So I'm getting my matcha. We have rehearsal at 10.45. It's like a call time, but I need to get my big ass jacket to the auditorium before then. So I'm gonna leave about like 10 15 ish maybe because i need to lug that shit around i need to practice like literally walking in my heels again because girl i cannot fall on stage and i don't think i will because babes literally like it'll be a moment either way like the girls will eat it up either way because the look is just so good who knows also it's so windy thank god there was supposed to be a storm like all weekend but it got pushed like a couple of days back for some reason. I guess like Miss Weather had some errand to run before she had to come that leg. But I'm lucky because I have to walk my look to the auditorium and that would have been a fucking mess if it was raining. So off to Ralph's now. Grace, what are we doing right now? We're braiding the hair into pigtails. Okay. We're looking crazy. Cray cray. Definitely. Is the hair even braidable? Yeah, after we brush it. <laughs> after we brush it. Um, is the part supposed to be in the middle? Yeah. <laughs> Does the cast want to introduce? Oh my god, hello. It's Slim Slady here. Slim Slady. Some ASMR. ASMR. Hello. Breakfast. You want to introduce yourself? Hey. This I'm is breakfast. breakfast. Wow. What are you up to in the dressing room? Just checking out, checking, checking out, out what's going on. For we're me. literally not doing anything right now, right? We're just waiting for lunch. Yeah, I think we're just waiting for lunch. <laughs> waiting for the food. Grace, you're so sweet, brother. Thank you so much. Literally, all the gays. All the gays. All the boys. They were evicted from the building. No, literally evicted. <laughs> <laughs> okay, introduce yeah, introduce so yourself. Hi. The spit is so good. Wait, stand further back and give it a little twirl. Oh, this is good. Oh my god, Alexandra, do you want to introduce yourself? Oh my god, I love it. What are you doing for the drag show? Literally epic. Devin. You're up, babes. Devin. Like good day, Ben. Like Ben. Devin. Yes. MJ does call me Devin. I have my friend in her. She also calls the Neil Sinai. So. Where's the purple marker? I just felt like it was an ongoing bit. And I'm a girl who defends the bit. Okay. Thank you. Cute. I think this is like one of the only steps I can actually do on camera in this room because I need a mirror and I don't own a I don't own a desk mirror. Um, girl, this is this better fucking work. I'm putting powder on my eyebrows right now. It's better fucking sad. Ugh. Mm. This is literally the worst quality video ever. But what can you do, babe? Not much. But yeah, this is my final look, my final runway moment. I honestly spent way too much time on the garment and should have focused more on my walk and how I look. 
but it was only 30 seconds. So how bad could you really fuck it up that much? I didn't realize how much I crave performing after the walk because seeing all my friends like kick ass on stage after the runway, oh my God, it was, it was absolutely incredible. And my friend um, Alexandra took such great photos, documentation of all the behind the scenes, which I'll put in as well. Um, Sasha Urban on Instagram too, had great documentation and everyone just killed it. Everyone slayed their looks, it was the best. Notes for next time, spend less time on the garment and more on the walk in the face. Cause I really should have communicated more expression. I should have took my time, soaked in the audience a bit more. But yeah, that was my first time doing drag, y'all. Thank you so much for watching this video. If you like the video, like the video. If you have fun, comment, critique, or don't to share, comment down below. And if you like me or want to follow my journey as an art student in LA, you can subscribe. It's a fun time here. And I think that's the end. Oh, I think that's the end of the video, y'all. That's the end of the video.